Authors William Strauss and Neil Howe describe a theorised recurring generation cycle in American history. They argue that patterns revolve around generational events, which they call turnings, with each lasting about 20 years. And it seems this is not just applicable to American history. Just a few weeks ago came this announcement from government. The new primary care centre will be built behind the existing St Bernard's Hospital. Government ministers and top GHA officials believe that co-location will present more opportunities than it will challenges. And 20 years earlier, almost to the week... Government has confirmed that the health centre is to be relocated in the ICC building. Terms with the landlord have now been agreed, which will allow the transfer of the facility from casemates as soon as practicable. The timescale will depend on the refurbishment and infrastructural works necessary at the ICC's second floor, where the health centre will be situated. Also in the last few weeks, MOD contractor Interserve recently announced a number of redundancies which prompted Unite the Union to action. of five compulsory redundancies at Interserve, Unite expressed its disappointment. Today, it's making that disappointment heard. And 20 years earlier... The Ministry of Defence announced it was not renewing Balfour Beatty's work services contract and was instead awarding the contract to a new operator, Haida International. The 150 employees, fearing for their jobs, approached their union, which said it would do everything in its power to ensure fairness in the handover. Well, if we do not, if the Ministry of Defence does not come to us and explains and reassure us on job uh, security for our members, then we will have to consider a, a programme of disruptive action within the Ministry of Defence. The Chief Minister made a ministerial statement a few weeks ago regarding our exit from the European Union. We will leave with the United Kingdom and we will leave despite the overwhelming choice we made in the referendum to remain in the EU. Because we all know that our deep relationship with the UK is stronger and more important to all of us than our membership of the EU. 20 years earlier, however, Gibraltar was arguing for inclusion in European elections. Over 16,000 signatures were collected for the Eurovote petition, which was delivered to Lord Bethel in London on the day he presented his amendment. Despite the overwhelming level of support, representing around 90% of the electorate, the Lords would not be swayed. Labour peers were disinclined to defy a government instruction to reject the amendment, and there was insufficient backing from the Conservatives and the Liberal Democrats, many of whom kept away from the chamber. A notable absentee was Baroness Thatcher, who, during her visit to The Rock in April, had taken an interest in the Eurovote campaign. The vote was lost by 110 to 67. Despite the strength of its case for being allowed to participate in European elections, it seemed that once again Gibraltar had been sacrificed on the altar of political expediency.